Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to cover the area of a kite and also that of a rhombus. Let's just first cut to the formula here. The formula for the area of a kite is just simply the product of the diagonals, then divided by 2. Now, there are other ways of determining the area for a kite, but this is the most common formula that is associated with the figure. This also works for rhombuses, and the reason why is because of the properties that, that they have involving their diagonals. Both kite and rhombuses have diagonals that are perpendicular. In addition, both have at least one diagonal that is bisected, that is cut in half, which is what you are seeing here. Let's do an example of one. Let's determine the area of this particular kite. When doing area problems, the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to write down its formula. After that, you will want to plug in the values. You will note that one diagonal is given here is 15, so that will go here. The other diagonal here is actually 6. You might notice this measurement on the outside. Well, that measurement is equivalent to the measurement of this diagonal here. So we've got 15 times 6 over 2. Just go ahead and solve for what's left, which is really just the area here. We'll multiply across the top, then divide by 2. Or you can reduce 6 and 2 here first before doing the multiplication. And that ends the problem. Let's do a second problem. Let's determine the area of this particular kite. Again, you want to start off by writing the formula. Then to plug in our values, you might note that this entire diagonal here is 20, so that will be one of them. The other one, though, is not going to be 4. You'll notice that 4 stretches only to here. But the entire diagonal is going to be twice that, which means that 8 is what we would use to plug in. From here, we can go ahead and solve. Just multiply the two values and then divide by 2. Or reduce first, either with 8 and 2 or with 20 and 2. And that would be it. I also want to point out an alternative way in which to do this problem. So let's start over again. Recall that in a kite, one pair, one of the two diagonals actually bisects the other. In this particular case, it's this one. Now if you're wondering how we know it's this one and not the other, it's because of the properties of a kite in that these two sides are congruent as well as these two pairs. Now if you were to draw one of the diagonals, say here, what you would get then is you would get basically two, two triangles, but they are not congruent to one another. Kind of like this here. However, if your diagonal was drawn going the other way, you will get two congruent triangles, one on the top here and one on the bottom. Kind of like this here. As you can see, these two are congruent because of side, side, side. Because of that, it would be enough just to find the area of just one of these triangles, and then you would double your answer to get it. So looking at it like this, the base is 20 for this triangle, and the height is 4. So using a triangle formula, you would write in 20 for the base, and then 4 for the height. And then when you do your arithmetic, you want to keep in mind that you'll end up multiplying this by 2 anyways. So I want you to note that 4 times 2 here is 8, which is what we originally had for the diagonal. See, this was diagonal 1. That's diagonal 2 over 2. So it comes out to be the same thing. Therefore, it's not completely necessary to know this formula, as long as you have an understanding of the triangle formula and the properties of a kite. Okay, how about we do another example? This time we'll be given the area. Now determine the value of x. Just as before, we'll start off with our formula first. Now let's plug in our information. The area is given this time. It's 108. So we're going to plug that in for a. One of the diagonals is 18, so it doesn't matter which one here. We'll just choose the first one. And then the second diagonal is x. That goes here. 
Now let's go ahead and solve this. We can do this by just reducing 18 and 2 to make 9, and then dividing by 9 to get our answer. There is an alternate way, though, if you're not able to reduce, or just plain do not want to reduce. Going back, what we can do is, instead of just doing the reduction, we can multiply out the 2. This way, we can reduce out our fraction now. Remember, this is going under the assumption that you could not reduce this in the first place. On the left-hand side, when you do the multiplication, you get 216, so that's 216 is equal to 18x. Then divide by 18 for your answer, and you should find that the answer is exactly the same. So that's it. Okay, let's do one last one here. Let's determine the area of this square. Now a square, mind you, isn't really quite like a kite, but it is a type of rhombus. Remember that a square is equilateral. This means that its diagonals are perpendicular to one another, and they bisect one another. That means that each of these segments are all nine. Since it is a type of rhombus, we can go ahead and use the diagonal formula. So there's step one, and there's step two. That's 18 and 18. Keep in mind that this diagonal length here is 9 and 9 together, giving you 18. Same thing for this diagonal length. We multiply and get 162. And that's our answer. <laughs>